So this one does obviously have factory navigation available there. We can kind of see the map, but which way you go is going to depend on which model of the vehicle you're in or which trim level and which packages you've added on. But this larger media screen is phenomenal. So I'm going to go through, teach you everything you need to know about what's, what's going on at this screen because it's pretty neat. So starting off along the very top, we can see what's going on with our temperature there. So we could adjust the driver passenger side there very easily, just kind of doing a press and hold if we want to. We can sync it out. So let's say if we're down here, so down the screen, we've adjusted the passenger side a little bit different. We go here, we sync, it's going to, it's going to default the passenger to whatever the driver's side setup is. We can easily adjust our ventilated or heated first row seats, our heated steering wheel, Along the passenger side, same idea. We can adjust what's going on with our heated, ventilated first row seats if we've got these available as an option. So that's a recurring theme. The buttons that are gonna be here will depend on which model of the vehicle that you're in and which features you have. We've got this little icon, and that's gonna be for individual profiles. So really useful because if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, we can link things, so this is kinda of neat, we link things like our phone, navigation, favorites, and things like that. So if you've got multiple people driving, you can link off everything and then switch profiles so that you don't have to constantly reset profiles and presets and comfort levels and things like that. It's gonna remember your own personal settings, which is amazing. We can edit out all of these different things. So we can even, oh, that's cool. Edit out our avatar if we wanna change the look. We can change out our welcome pop-up. We can delete profiles and a few other things, which is fantastic. So it's all done through our little My Profile there, which we can also access through the app screen along the very bottom. Along the top there, we can see if there's any notifications that are available for the vehicle. We can see if we're currently connected to Wi-Fi. Figure out what's going on with our outside temperature. We've got our current time as well. And then you saw there, so we pushed that little bar. Oh, and when we did, it gave us a little drop down with our surround view camera, so our full 360 cam. We'll get to that one in a bit. Pull back down, we've got our temperature, profiles, notifications, passenger voice, Wi-Fi hotspot, and a few other things. Then we can also adjust our clock settings if we want to that way instead. We can figure out what we're currently connected to for media. And as you can see there, as we press any of these buttons, it's gonna launch us into different pages. And that's one cool thing about Jeep because you're gonna notice a few of the same settings across different places of the vehicle, which we'll get to as we navigate through. But we've got our home screen here. We can pop out to go full screen navigation, back home, and then one really cool thing, we can adjust our pages here. So we go My Pages, we can add pages, delete pages, and reorder. So if we want to add in a unique page with different things, we've got the flexibility to be able to do that. So we can add in different widgets. So if we wanted to add in things like our climate settings, favorite, and a number of other things, we'd have that flexibility. And then we go back home, we can now swipe between active pages that we've created too, which is amazing. We've got what's going on with our current audio, but then another great thing, so we've got all of our different pages, we can also take these buttons, we can do a press and hold, and we can also drag it around to a different spot. So if you wanted to have media comfort in different positions, you've got that flexibility, which is amazing. But let's dive through all of these different settings now. So we've got our media icon there. And when we do that, we've got our sources. So we've got FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, if we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would be an available option. We've got our AM radio on top of that, and we can adjust between different sources along the side there too, which is great. Jump back into sources along the very top. We, you saw there, we jump into playing. We can adjust out this way. We can change out stations this way. We can also type in a station that way if we want to and hit go if we want to tune out. So there are so many different ways we can do it. And you can see there, in order to be able to save a preset, once you've tuned to whatever station you want to save, you're just going to press and hold, and it can be on any of the available spots, and it's going to give you your preset there, so it's saving it in. We can hit all presets to see all of our available presets that we've saved. We can adjust number of presets that are available to show there on top of that, which is fantastic. So if you're a heavy audiophile, you can see there a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. So you've got a ton of options that are available. And then we can just hide that again. We can button press there in order to be able to get to all of our different sources that way too. When we jump into Sirius XM though, we've got some other options. So we've got our related content. We can see what's going on with our profiles. So we can, well, obviously right now we're in a demo, but you've got your flexibility of being able to log in. You can look at artist radio too. We've got our favorites, listening history, and all of our different settings, specifically for Sirius XM. So we can block out explicit content, reset all of our history, and things like that. 
So if you're a really heavy Sirius XM listener, it's useful to know that we've got all this available as an option. If you've got an active, system, uh, active Sirius XM subscription, we can log in and set up. We can also manage our settings, call up Sirius XM for them to transfer the system over instead. So really straightforward to use this. And I mean, we got to do this. So the audio, amazing song, but the sound inside of it is great because this one has the upgraded Alpine audio system. So we've got some different options there. But I did mention we've got all of our different sources that we can play with. We've got Browse, and that's kind of neat because it lets us know what stations are available, which is straightforward when we get into Sirius XM. But if we look at AM FM and go to Browse, it's got every station that's available around where we are. So if you're new to an area, you're not really sure what you can listen to, we can go there and then we can look at all stations that are available, which is amazing. We've got all of our audio settings along the very top, so we can figure out what's going on with our balance and fade. We can look at our equalizer to adjust what's going on with, let's base it out a little bit and let's drop the treble, adjust our audio settings there. The reason why I did this, generally cranking the bass a bit, dropping the treble is gonna give you pretty good audio. We've got our speed adjusted volume. So as we go faster or slower, it's automatically going to adjust what's going on with our audio. We've got surround sound instead. So if you want like more of an immersive experience, we've got our autoplay setting there. So when we plug in a USB stick, do we want auto automatically playing? Same thing on the radio. So do we want the radio automatically to turn on when the vehicle's turned on? Yes, no, we can recall the last station, etc. Do we want to turn the radio off when the door is open? Yes or no? volume adjustment. This is really cool because oh, we've got our volume adjustment, which is great because we can adjust the volume for our media, for phone, for navigation, and for our voice and things like that. So if you wanted to have navigation volume low, high, whatever the case, oh, <laughs> high or low, whatever the case may be, we'd have the flexibility to do it. And that's going to be all for our audio settings. So very straightforward there. Next up, so we can go back to our main audio there or jump into different presets if we wanted to. And I did mention we can go to all presets if we wanted to go that route and then hiding again. Next up is our comfort setting. So comfort, crazy climate control settings available here. So we could, if we want to, adjust our driver passenger side. We can have it going, oh, we can have it going to our windshield, face, feet, some sort of combination of all the above. We've got our driver side settings. So do we want our heated or do we want our ventilated seats going for the driver or for the passenger side? Do we, want it our, do we want our heated steering wheel going? Yes or no. Max AC, air conditioner, et cetera. And then as we adjust any of, oh, dang. As we adjust any of our settings using the climate controls down the center stack, as you saw there, that's automatically going to adjust what's going on in this screen too. So great settings that are available. I did mention we've got our base sync button there too, or we can just let the vehicle determine what the temperature should be on the inside here. Moving into our factory navigation. So we've got a few different ways that we can search for an address. We could search this way if we want to go old school. We could, oh, that's actually a neat one. We can enter in a home or work address. And one of the benefits there is we can say navigate to home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be, and it's going to automatically jump that way. We can look at parking, we can look at gas stations, any point of interest icons for restaurants and things like that. We'd have that flexibility. We can just do a generic search again if we want to. Pressing this little button gives us all of our different point of interest icons, or we can browse all of the available categories. And oh my gosh, there are so many categories available here, which is kind of crazy. Wow. So we can search that way. We can search by GPS coordinates, or we can press the voice command prompt and we'd be able to navigate this way instead. So we can say, let's go home. Let's go Canceled. different point of interest icons. I'm Canadian. Navigate to Tim Hortons. Morton's. Morton's? No, this I don't want to go. Everything I found. <laughs> I guess we're going to Morton's in Toronto. It's a steakhouse. I think that's amazing. Canceled. So we've got the option of being able to navigate using our voice instead. Just be sure you're very clear when you're talking, but it's cool that we've got that as an option there, which is nice. Actually, let's try that again. Navigate to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Perfect. This you're is everything I found. attempting, but <laughs> we've at least got it there. Tim Hortons. Perfect. Kingston Road, Pickering, so you can Ontario. see there, we Want could there. zoom in and out this way. A very responsive screen, which is fantastic. 
Let's cancel out for a second there. And it's got our route going, so we could, if we want to, jump back there. And then we've got a few points. So we can use it as a starting point if we're going to different places. We can hit this button as well to be able to hide or show, add to favorites, or we just hit drive. And we've got our main route there. If there were other routes available, it would give us different options, but strictly the single route. So we hit drive, and this is how we make it happen. We can find gas stations as well. We can exit out. We can change out the direction of the type of map that we've got there. We can also have alerts only. We can mute, go back to all options, or just end route. Yes and the route's cancelled out. So very, very straightforward, being able to use all of these different options here, which is fantastic. And I did mention we could look at our favourites, we can view all of our recent destinations there as well, so wherever we've gone, we can hit delete, select, delete, and as you see there, deleting all of our different options there too, which is really, really straightforward. We can push this button now if we want to get to some other options. So do we want to search? Do we want to add in our work home addresses? Look at recents? Do we want to go to different trips? So if we're creating like multi-stage trips, we can look at our maps there as well. So for different options, we can download different maps or we can look at some different settings. So when we, oh, wrong button, or we can look at some different settings. So we can show different things. So our traffic flow, if we want to show our traffic, our arrival time and distance. So if we've got an up, well, if we're going to a different address, do we want to have it showing our remaining distance, how much time it's going to take, or both? Do we want to show the arrival information for our final destination or our next stop? If we've got multiple steps for our step or for our destination, do we want to hide the sidebar when we look at our map from different point of interest icons? Do we want to show different things on our route, on our map, etc.? We can look at settings for our map view. Do we want to have the map auto zoom? So as we get closer to our destination, are we going to zoom in and out? What type of orientation do we want? So we've saw our 3D, 2D, etc. Different routing options that are available. So do we want the fastest, the shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do we want to avoid things like toll roads, carpool lanes, unpaved roads, tunnels, and so many other things? Do we want to send our destination to our phone when our phone's connected? Do we want it to automatically, oh, that's a cool one. Do we want it to automatically reroute as well? So if it recognizes that a faster route's available, it would give us the option to be able to do that automatically or manually. Different sounds and alerts. Do we want to have our vehicle read out different things out loud? So we can, this is so cool. We can literally have it read out individual things. For cameras, if there's an upcoming red light camera, for different safety warnings, do we want it to tell us when we're speeding? <sighs> when there's a traffic jam ahead, and what type of alert do we want for all of these options? And then some other settings that are available, privacy, and then our basic about. So a lot of information there, but I mean, that's how you use factory navigation inside of this thing. Next up, adding in a phone is also very straightforward. So you see there, we don't have any devices that are currently connected. So no items, we can look at our device manager here, we can add a device, do not disturb, and we can also activate two phones if we want to. So no device connected, so let's start off and actually connect a device. So we're gonna go add device, and we want to search for, we're looking for Uconnect there, so we're gonna go Bluetooth, and that's already showing up, so let's connect. Hey. Do we want to connect up? The pin number is matched, so that's good. So we're going to pair and yes. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit no for now, but I mean, you saw that a few seconds and we're connected there, which is amazing. Now it's also saying, do we want to allow CarPlay? Because Uconnect 5 supports wireless CarPlay, which is amazing. So do we want to use CarPlay with this vehicle? Yes, we're going to use it. Okay, let's connect. Okay. And it's going to be a second or two here and you can see there carplay and we are fully connected there so really straightforward but i love the way that it looks on this screen it's phenomenal so we've got google maps that are there we can swipe across if we want to we can we've got apple maps we've got google maps we've got Waze. we can use any of these map applications right through this middle screen we can easily adjust there we can't pinch to zoom on apple carplay but we can adjust this way to zoom in out as necessary there if we want to Really straightforward, done once we're finished up there. We can search for addresses, look at our favorites, we can navigate this way. We can do a long press and hold on the steering wheel to activate our, our Siri Assistant as well, which is fantastic. We can push this button to go back to our Uconnect phone or hop out of CarPlay if we want to. 
If we've done that, we can push there to jump back in, push this button in order to go back to our sub screen or here to go back to the main screen instead. So we've got whatever map application we've launched last showing up. We can see what current time it is, what, what we've got for signal, battery, and a few other things. We've got our podcast there. And then as we swipe across, we've got, as I mentioned, maps, podcasts. Certain apps will work through the screen, other ones won't. Now, one nice thing is that through our phone, we can just go general settings. And then from there, we can go CarPlay. We just find the vehicle. We can forget the car, we can disable CarPlay, or we can customize. So if we launch back into Car, oh, launch back into CarPlay rather than disabling it. So let's hop into CarPlay there, swipe across. If we want to adjust things, like let's say if you love listening to your podcasts and your audiobooks, you'd have that flexibility. If you've accidentally deleted something, it does remove it, but it adds it back here. We could just do a reset if we wanted to, and it's going to bring everything back to the factory default settings there instead. So you've got quite a few different options that are available here, but I mean, as you saw there, very simple to use. Whether you decide to go the podcast route, if you want to listen, browse, look at your library, whatever the case may be, we can launch our phone, go back to device manager if we want to, and then we can also select if we want to have it to going just to our phone, to audio, or CarPlay, which is going to give us all of the above. But very straightforward using an iPhone inside of this thing. Next up, connecting an Android is the exact same process. So if we weren't on this screen, let's say we were back here, or actually I guess we're technically connected to CarPlay right now. So let's do something. Let's disable this for a second. Perfect, so we're not connected. And now if we want to, we can add a device in. So we just go add device, and we're just gonna search for our Android device, or for our device. So we're just going to search, you connect there. Pins match up, so yes and okay. Bluetooth pairing. So allow access to contacts. I'm going to say no for now. And messages, same idea. But we're connected there. And as you can see there, so favorite phones have connection priorities. So do we want to make it the favorite? Yes or no? I'm going to say no for now. And then do I want to connect to Android Auto? Yes or no? I'm going to hit OK. So yes, we're going to connect. And as you can see there, it's got a little bar. It's connecting now. And three, two, one. So we need to finish connecting on our car. So let's continue. I think that's really it. It's just, it's that, it's that, and we're there, and we are fully connected, which is amazing. So we've got that available as an option. We've got our settings, traffic, route options. So if we want to avoid things like motorways, toll roads, ferries, things like that, you can see what's going on with our podcasts. We've got our music notifications. We've got our Google Assistant that we can activate that way. We can also just press and hold on the steering wheel there if we want to activate it that way. We push this little button and that brings us to our Android Auto home screen. So one thing, this phone does have both Google Maps and Waze installed, but I mean, as you see there, it doesn't give us the flexibility of being able to use Waze inside of this vehicle, unfortunately. But very similar to the iPhone side of things, on our phone, if we search for Android Auto, we can go to settings. And when we go through settings, we can look at our connection help, previously connected cars, we can customize our launcher, disable wireless CarPlay, and a few other things. So, wire, or sorry, wireless Android Auto, and a few other things. We can also, I did mention, customize the launcher. So if we want to customize things, we could, very similar to what we saw the Apple side of things, we just kind of press and hold, and then, oh, helps if I accidentally actually press and hold, then we can kind of like adjust it up and down this way. But one thing to take into account, so any changes we make, we actually have to close down Android Auto and then reconnect in order for any changes to take into effect. So it's not dynamic the same way it was on the Apple side of things, but I mean, you saw there easy enough. We can launch back into our phone or the device manager again. And as you see there, we've got both phones connected. So if I go back to the one phone here, we can also make it a favorite. So it's essentially if both phones are in the vehicle, who's gonna get connection priority first? We can enable the phone, Bluetooth, disable Android Auto, whatever the case may be. We can go to a charge only mode. We can delete the device and things like that. So if you've got multiple phones connected, we can say this is now the favorite. And you can see there, it's now got connection priority. But one even cooler thing is that if we've got multiple phones connected, so we're gonna end our Android Auto session, we can have one phone connected for our phone, one phone connected for our audio. Really useful. So if you want to connect your phone without actually connecting to the phone for making phone call or to the vehicle for phone calls, we'd have that flexibility. So we can go one or the other, some sort of Frankenstein combination for these four. We can obviously only connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay separately though. So we do have that flexibility, which is great. We can have two active phones. We can go into do not disturb mode or 
we go to the bottom, delete device, yes. There, bottom, delete device, yes. So I mean, as you saw there, super straightforward being able to add delete phones from this vehicle. Next up is the actual vehicle settings. So we've got our surround camera now. So as you can see there, full 360 view. We've got our top view and our rear view. We can move out so that it's strictly a rear view, strictly a front view, our front split view, which is really useful. So a little bit of a start comparison. We've got our back 360 or our front 360. So if we're going through a trail, we wanna see what's going on there, we could, or we can just look at our backup camera there view instead. So we've got quite a few different options that are available there and just exit out of that or hop into strictly our rear, our rear view camera instead. From there, we've got a series of different settings available. So different options for our display. So do we want either Spanish, English, Italian, or French as our primary language? For our display mode, do we want to have it auto or for manual adjust? And that's going to be for our brightness and things like that. So you can see there when we're in auto mode, some of these things are disabled and that's because it's automatically doing it. We can set different themes as well. So if we want a different style theme, See there, loading out, and it's going to give us a slightly different look. So it's really going to be a matter of personal preference. You can see some basic layouts and color changes and things like that as we move between different themes. So it's going to be a matter of preference which one you go with. Moving back, we've got our units. So do we want to have our distance in kilometers? Do we want barometers, PSI, Celsius, Fahrenheit? What type of fuel consumption settings do we want there as well? We've got our touchscreen beep. Do we want that happening? Yes or no? We've got all of our different labels, turn by turn directions right inside of the cluster screen. Do we want that showing? Yes or no. We've got different options for our profile. So for your own unique profile, what language do you want? What display mode do you want? Units and things like that. So again, if you've got multiple user profiles, it's really cool that we've got so many different settings for your own unique profile. So it's gonna save it in to your own profile, which is amazing. So you can move up and down between all of these different settings if you wanna have it create your own unique profile with all of these different options. Do you prefer a male or female voice for 12 or 24 hour mode? Which options? do you want and that's specific to your own profile for driver assistance settings we've got things like emergency braking so if the vehicle senses a potential forward collision is it going to give us a warning and brake is it just going to warn us or will it do nothing oh that's, oh, that's on this one let's get it to do both for our sensitivity, do we want to have it for, essentially for the braking when will that happen do we want to have, to have a close sensitivity medium or far away if it recognizes a pedestrian, do we want it actively braking for us as well? We've got our driving assist. So do we want a steering wheel vibration? And that's useful because if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, we're going to get a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if we're running over rumble pavement. We've got our lane management, so we've got a few different options there. So do we want to get a vibration? Do we want it to give our steering assist so it's going to gently nudge us back into our lane? Or do we want it to do both? So if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, vibrate, and it's going to nudge us back into our lane. For lane warning, do we want it to give it the same idea, early, medium, or late warning? Do we want a low, medium, or high vibration strength? And then same idea with our steering assist. So when it nudges us back into our lane, do we want it to be a low, medium, or a high nudge? Our traffic signal sign assist there as well. Do we want to toggle that on or off? Our traffic sign warning, do we want to have? So it's more or less letting us know if there's different traffic signs coming up. Speed sign, if those change, do we want to get notifications? And then what's going on with our blind spot system? So that's going to, that's going to let us know if a car's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. From there, we've got our clock and date. So do we want to have it automatically adjust based off of our GPS location? For format, do we want 12 or 24 hour mode? Do we want to show our time status in our bar there as well? Yes, no. And do we want to set the date? Now, obviously, these things are disabled because we're in auto mode. So if we go into anything but auto mode, it gives us the flexibility of being able to adjust these things out. Moving down, phone and Bluetooth. We've already seen all of our device manager settings there. We've got our do not disturb and enable active two phones. Our voice, do we want a male or female? Do we want to be able to listen to a wake up word? So we say, hey, you connect. Tune to 94.9 FM. So it's really cool. So you see there, it changes stations out for us very simply. We can use that wake word. We've got our barge, our, com our command list is an interesting one. So this is the command list. So whether or not that one shows up is gonna be a matter of preference. I honestly, when you first get the Jeep, it's probably a good idea to keep this one enabled for a bit until you at least realize what all the different settings and options are. 
from there, series of other options. We've got our options for navigation, which we've already seen all of these things when we were looking through the navigation there. Different options for camera, so our surround camera delay. So as we go to drive forward, the camera will stay on for a few seconds. And then do we want to show our guidelines there as well? So if we're in our surround, these are going to be the guidelines. So whether or not that one shows up, going to be a matter of preference there. Mirrors and wipers, do we want it to be rain sensing? Our lights for headlight sensitivity, our delay when we go to lock the vehicle, how long do we want our headlamps staying on for before they turn off? Do we want it just auto turning off? Do we want our outside lights? Do we want it to auto dim our high beam? So if it recognizes an oncoming vehicle, automatically gonna dim the beams for us. Do we want our lights cornering there for us as well? And then do we want our lights flashing when we go to lock the vehicle? Our brakes, do we wanna automatically have it turn our parking brake on when we stop the vehicle, throw it into park? And then brake service. So do we need brake service done? We've got our doors and locks. So do we want things auto unlocking? Do we wanna flash our lights with our lock? Do we wanna sound our horn when we lock the vehicle? Do we wanna sound the horn when we remote start? How many, do we wanna look at passive entry? So we don't need to have the, we've got our key fob on us, but we don't need to unlock in order to get inside. That's a really useful feature. Do we wanna have our settings linked to our individual key fob? And then do we wanna enable or disable our hands-free lift gate? Seats in comfort, so do we want all of our heated seats and steering wheel and things like that coming on automatically with remote start on all starts, or do we just want it off so we can adjust it ourselves? We've got our key off options, so same idea, headlight delay, we've seen that in a few other options. Our radio delay, so when we go to turn the vehicle off, do we want the radio to just be off, or do we want it to give it 20 minutes before it turns off automatically? Some different audio settings, which we've already seen. Notifications, do we want all of these different notifications showing up? Sirius XM, do we want to block explicit content? Adjust our profile. Looking at software updates, do we want to download them automatically over Wi-Fi? Yes, and you want to make sure you're connected to a Wi-Fi network at home, as you can see there. Make sure you're connected to a Wi-Fi network at home because it's automatically going to download the system update and install it for you. What's our current system information? And then reset. So we can reset our radio if that's giving us issues. We can reset our personal data. We can reset factory, or we can essentially go factory reset. So if you're selling your vehicle, just bring it back to our factory defaults instead. So I know a lot of information, but there are so many things to know. One other thing would be our app screen. And that's essentially going to be, so either favorites, recent that we've used, categories, or all. So pretty much every service that's available inside the vehicle to a degree. So it is kind of neat though. So if we wanted like a hot button press to get into our driver ventilated seat and our heated steering wheel, we would now be able to do that because it's added to our favorites. So we can just go to favorites now. And as you can see there, we've got our heated wheel and a few other options that are available here. So it's kind of neat. We've got that available as an option. So we hit our wheel, etc. So it is kind of nice. Like I said, our app screen is essentially gonna be a summary. We can remove things if we want to, and then we can press the, if we wanna get into our Alexa controls, if we wanna get into our device manager and things like that, and we can star any of these things out if we'd like to, having it showing up on our favorite screen there instead. Oh, well, that was a look at the media screen inside of the Jeep Compass. What did you think? Really straightforward to use, but I love all of the different features, like having the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay now, I think is phenomenal. But if you ran into any problems, if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section.